Keir Starmer, many would say the biggest single problem facing schools is a workforce that feels underpaid, demotivated. What is a fair settlement of this pay dispute? Well, the pay dispute does need to be settled, and it won't be settled unless the government gets in the room and negotiates. At the moment, the government is sitting it out. Um, meanwhile, our schools are shut on strike days and education is damaged, so the government needs to sort that out. But what I was dealing with today is not, as it were, the immediate short-term problem, but setting out um, a mission, a purpose, a driving purpose, which is intended to remove barriers to opportunity and make sure that we break this pernicious hold where too many children and young people are held back by the fact that where they start in life is determining where they end up and that the earnings of their parents um, are more determinative of where they'll get to than their own talent. Uh, we cannot tolerate that. We've set out a mission to you know, break that class ceiling. Um, tons I want to talk to you about all of that, but just... On the specifics, 4.3% is what's been offered and they've turned down. That's too low, isn't it? Well, look, I'm not going to... We're in opposition, we're not in the room, and nobody um, negotiates on air, um, particularly if you're the opposition well, you're not, not a, in the room. You're not, you're not negotiating, you've just got to have a, have a view, and I think people will be struck, they don't ha seem to have a well, view. Look, Robert, whether you're in government or whether you're in opposition... Um, you don't negotiate on air um, something that you need to agree around the table. That's the same for any negotiation. The trade unions well understand that. Now, um, you've talked about crumbling schools, need to buy you know, IT kit fit for purpose. We know about the problems the NHS has. Very little is possible unless the economy grows again. The growth rate of the economy has fallen by two-thirds yeah. since 2008 in the banking crisis. Level with the British people, you can't get the growth rate up quickly. So it's going to be years till, if you win the election, you can fund public services in the way that people want. Two responses to that. We do need growth, and that's why the first mission I set out was about how we grow the economy, how we raise living standards. But it'll take whole, years, won't it? Across the whole but it will take the years. Country. We can move at pace, and the sooner we get the chance to start, uh, the better. Well, give us one the, thing that's going to change the growth rate in a year or two. Well, look, many of the things that we put on the table, the investment that we will put in, the working with small business, there are many businesses who are ready to partner with us. But the second thing I would say is this. It's not all about money. We need reform. If you look at the health service, if you look at education, Reform is a critical part of how we go forward, whether it's the health service, technology, preventative health, uh, etc., or whether it's in education, changing the curriculum so that young people, children, actually have the skills they need for the life and the work that they're actually going to go into. And that's why today I set out um, this focus on oracy, on the ability to speak um, clearly and with confidence. That is a major barrier for children and young people. And you we said, intend to take that out of the way. And you said about you know, learning to speak, oracy, that it gives you a steely core. Were you describing yourself? Look, I was describing myself in a lot of what I said today because my journey has been from a working class family, a dad who was a tool maker, worked in a factory, a mum who was a nurse. We didn't have a lot of money. How did and you got, learn these powers of communication then? I got the chance through the support my parents gave me through the chance to go to university first, in my family to do that, to become the head of the Crown Prosecution Service and now head of the Labour Party. I want every child to have that opportunity. And all the evidence shows that one of the barriers to that is the inability to express oneself clearly and with confidence and to speak up in any environment. And almost every business I talk to says, when it comes to recruiting people in, that's what we're looking for. We can do the technical skills, but we need them to have those life skills. So let's give our children the chance to fulfil their ambitions, uh, their aspirations and the opportunities that they deserve. Uh, people, I think, do want to know more about you. Lots of people around you say you do have this steely core. Where do you think that came from? I think that came from my parents. I think that if you come from a working class background, you have to make difficult decisions as you go along. It comes from a deep sense of dignity and respect that my parents instilled in me. My dad is a tool, uh, as a skilled tool maker. My mum was a nurse. My mum was very ill. She taught me um, what courage and difficult decisions really look like over and over again. Uh, but I want every child to have those opportunities. And at the moment, they don't. And we're, we're flatlining or going backwards on this basic thing that... Um, children shouldn't be held back by the earning capacity of their children. This is 2023. This is 
the UK, the idea that we still have that, that class ceiling is still there, I think it frustrates me knowing you know, my own journey through life and I want every child to have that. And you talked rather emotionally about the shame that your dad felt as a toolmaker rather than somebody with sort of academic ability. You want parity of esteem for skills. Does that mean in your view that too many people are concentrating when it comes to third level education on academic training rather than on vocational skills? I think we need both. But I think. But are, we, are, are there too many academic courses? Uh, well, I think we need both, and I don't want to hold people back from academic courses, but I do want exactly the point you made on parity of esteem. Th this business of um, looking up to the academic and looking down the vocational, that's been hardwired for many years. It was there for my dad. Mm. You know, that, that's why he hated the question, what do you do for a living? Um, because when he said he worked in a factory, he was a toolmaker, he felt people looked down on him, and they shouldn't have done. And I obviously felt the opposite when I was the first in my... Uh, in my family to go to university. We have to break that, frankly, snobbery. Now, I believe that artificial intelligence is a general purpose technology. It's going to transform the economy probably faster than is widely appreciated. I don't get the sense of urgency from the government or from you about the change that's coming and what needs to happen to schools, to lifelong learning, to make sure that British people don't suffer. Well, I do, th I mean, I think you're right about AI and the change it can bring. It can bring fantastic things. AI working with a radiologist can improve the chances of detecting stage one or two cancer um, by 60%. So there's a huge amount of good, but of course... But if three quarters of your to, job is going to be done by a machine... But of course, we have to guard against uh, wrongful use and or um, have a plan for the job losses. I think that requires regulation. It requires a discussion. That's why we've called for that um, and the government's got a chance with this yeah. summit in the autumn to move this forward we could do it on a cross-party basis and an urgent basis now just a couple of very quick ones um, you will be aware of how poverty actually ends up putting much more pressure on the health service because people who grow up in poverty become ill much iller than their peers it massively affects your ability to learn in schools. Two questions. Why isn't there more of a commitment to free school meals? And why isn't there more of a commitment to eradicate poverty? Well, on free school meals, uh, a number of boroughs, Wales, of course, and the mayor do provide free school meals. It's a healthy debate in the Labour Party. Um, we think that breakfast clubs, which is where all children uh, at primary school have the chance to come in for support and for food before school, is the way forward. It's a healthy debate. Um, but, you know, we are constrained by the money available and the targeting um, that is available as well. Um, your colleague, John McDonnell, says you're drunk with power, purging dissenters. He's right, isn't he? No, he's not. I have, I'm single-minded uh, about Labour Party going into power, into government. And, you know, I've been in Parliament now for seven years, eight years even, in opposition. And all that happens in opposition is that you oppose, you don't change. And the Labour Party was founded um, for one single purpose, which was to form governments to change things for the better for working people. And we lost sight of that in the last. But at the moment, few you years, haven't actually given people. But you haven't yet given people the specific co policies. People say you're too cautious. You seem to be relying on the government to lose the election. You need, surely, some would say, to be more positive. I've just set out five missions. Uh, set, uh, uh, over the course of the last few months, setting out in terms... But lacking uh, what detail. An, what, an lacking in, detail. what an incoming Labour government hopes to achieve in the next five to ten years if we're privileged... When do we get the detail? To. Well, the de if you look at even today, we've set out what we want to do um, reviewing the curriculum, how we want to get sure, make sure we have 6,500 new teachers in, how we're going to pay for that in the shortage, uh, in a, in the shortage subject areas, how we retain the teachers we've got. I think that we are setting out the detail, but we're also doing something else which is very important. We're setting out the ambition for our country to move forward. We've been stuck now for 13 years. Everything seems to be broken under this government. Nothing is working. Almost everyone says, I'm no better off now than I was when this government started. We need to change that, have ambition for our country again, set it out. I've done that in five missions. I think that's actually uh, a more 
um, detail than most opposition leaders gave at this stage outside of an election. Keir Starmer, very good to see you. Thank you.